In the previous episode, we completely disassembled the transaxle case. We started with the shift forks and shift shafts and reverse idler gear. Then we finished with the removal of the input shaft, output shaft, and differential. Today's video disassembles the input and output shafts. Traditionally, one would check the bearing thrust clearances with feeler gauges as shown. However, a quick and dirty way to check bearing thrust clearances is to attach an indicator to the shaft and move the bearing axially to determine the thrust clearance. Here you can see I tie wrapped the indicator to the shaft. It's important to verify the needle roller bearings for each gear. You can do this by measuring the radial movement with an indicator. The setup I used is not ideal but will work in a pinch. I recommend using V-blocks to support the shaft and your measurements will be much more accurate. Repeat this measurement and verify all needle roller bearings are within spec. Yeah, it only moved like a thou. <clears throat> so I'm calling that thing good. Now, you need to check fourth gear, you need to check third gear, and also you need to check first and second as well on the output shaft. But let's focus on getting this guy apart now. Like that. And then we'll put this guy over the top so we don't lose it. I heard it. And look, there it is. Bam, we got it. These guys have really nice blades on them too. So you fit it over the top like this, give it a good squeeze, and then we're gonna tighten these guys down. See how it fits real nice around this area right here? The other ones, the diameter didn't fit very well because it was too small. So this is the perfect size. Now we'll take this thing over to the press. This is just a 20 ton from China Freight. I did switch the bottle for air over hydraulics, so I don't have to like crank it. So I'm just gonna put this guy in here. And I'm gonna put these plates on underneath here. You just wanna make sure that it will come through. So I'm gonna check it this way and put, kind of put it in the middle. Make sure that it's lined up. And then obviously when you're pushing down on it, don't let the shaft fall. So I have this little switch here. And again, this is air over hydraulic. So it's gonna make a little noise, but check this thing out. Okay, so I'm back at the workbench. I put this guy back into the transaxle case. So this bearing's no longer on there. Well, I thought it was. Oh, got that thing off. Now we can take off fourth gear. Take off fourth gear, up close and personal here. The needle roller bearings, they come off in halves. That's what they look like right there. And then here's the little spacer. There's the spacer coming off. And then there's the snap ring right in there. Can you see the snap ring? That's it right there. And once you pop that thing out, now you can get off this synchronizer set. And again, this is the sleeve right here. This is the synchronizer. This will probably come off right now. There you go. This is a synchronizer right here. And you can see that it fits in a particular way. See these little, see that little hole right there? And there's another hole right there. There's three of them. And those are for the shifting keys. So this has to fit in there properly. You could rotate it around until it drops in. So there's that little hole right there. And that's the way it fits. And you can kind of see that it fits into there like that. So pull that off, like that. Towel. Got it. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there it is right there. Money. Now, we're going to be grabbing on this guy. And a lot of the times, people stick these things on here like this, right? So that looks like it'll fit pretty well. But what I don't like about that is it's at an angle. But since there's room, let's flip it over and it'll run flat with the gear. So let's flip it over this way. Okay, here we are again. And notice I've got this thing upside down and that way it's sitting on the flat. So it's less likely to chip any of these gears. And when we put it flat, it distributes its load along much, many more teeth than it would if it were the cone side. So remember on the bearing separator, there's two sides. There's the cone side, and then there's the flat side. So on this smaller one here, we're using the flat side. Now we're gonna push this guy, and it's the hub that's in here that is pressed onto the shaft. 
So this gear is free running, and so it should have needle roll bearings in there. So we're gonna push this guy off, and here we go. That's third gear, and then this is the synchro between third and fourth. Don't forget to grab the shaft underneath so that way it doesn't go falling. There, it just released. Okay, we're back at the workbench and we just pressed off the third gear and the hub and the sleeve. And right underneath third gear are these two little guys right here. And these are more needle roller bearings for third gear. And you could see that this comes off. Oh yeah, that's the sinker right there. Look at how it comes apart right here. So that faces towards the synchro. And there's no direction for this guy because these guys fit into right here where the keys are. These little holes, see the hole right there? There should be three holes right there. One, two, and then number three. And those have to fit in where the shift keys are like that. But look. Check that out. We have the whole shaft, the input shaft, completely apart right now. There's nothing else left on it to take off. Pretty, pretty cool. And so you can inspect this thing, make sure there are no scratches on or anything like that. Now we're gonna do this exact same thing, but with the output shaft. On the output shaft, remember there used to be a bearing here. So this bearing exploded. So this is the inner race of the bearing. And this is the fourth driven gear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this guy into the bearing separator. We'll push the bearing separator, we'll support this guy right here, and we'll push the shaft through the middle of it. And that'll pop off this fourth driven gear, and it'll pop off the inner race of this particular ball bearing that we had here, this radio ball bearing. And then this should be a little collar right here, I believe, it's a, a little spacer. So let's go set up for that. Okay, this is a little bit in, of an unorthodox method. And the reason why is because this guy, this gear doesn't fit in between these guys right here. And if it doesn't fit in between there, it's got nowhere to go. When you push this thing down, it'll get stuck on this thing. So I set this thing up. I've got a couple bars that go across here. And then I use this U section, and that U section is probably about, I don't know, six inches tall. And then it has a little bit of room to go, and I'm hoping that's enough room for it to fall down. And again, this bearing was messed up, so that's just an inner race right here. And then this is the fourth driven gear, so we're gonna press off the gear. I flip this guy upside down, again, to distribute load across many teeth so we don't chip that guy. And then I'm gonna push this thing down and hopefully I'm gonna hang onto the shaft so it doesn't fall down. Got it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, we just took these guys off and again, there's a spacer. And this guy is pressed on to the hub, just like that. And then there'll be a bearing that goes on top of that. Obviously these both were pressed on so it won't go down and then we'll pull this little spacer off. And that's the fourth driven gear. Okay, so now we need to remove the third driven gear and you can kind of see it's pressed on it because it's spline, it's pressed on to the output shaft. Then we got to remove this second gear. So second gear is on roller bearing, so it's not attached to the shaft. So that means we can grab underneath it and then push that thing up. So to make it easier, let's push the synchro ring down. So we'll grab from underneath here and then we'll start pushing on the shaft down in this section and then we'll press those guys off. Let's push this thing off. Again, we're gonna catch the output shaft as it's pushing through. There, it just broke through. This is the third driven gear. This is second gear. Underneath second gear, you have four holes in it. Those four holes have to fit on these four protrusions in this little silver guy right here. Now we're gonna take off this guy, which is a uh, needle roller bearing. That's for a second. There's a little spacer right in here. You can pull the spacer out. Kind of see the spacer. It's a little oily. Okay. There's not only a silver cone, there's an inner cone too. 
but the inner cone can only fit in here one way. Look, it won't sit properly when you put this thing in here. Watch. Put this thing in here first. Notice it's kind of flush right there. Look at that. It's flush. This guy has these little protrusions, and those protrusions have to fit in that hole right there. There's one right there, and then there's one right there. You can kind of see it. And look, if this thing, let's say the protrusions are not in the right spot, look, see how it sits up? You gotta rotate that thing until it drops in. Right there, look how flush it is now. So, and then, I already pulled all of these guys out of here. Shifting keys, that's what they are, springs and shifting keys. So those fall into here, there, and then there's another one on the other side. So you can take this thing guy out. And again, there's a protrusion right here that this thing falls into, right there. Okay, so it can't go anywhere. And then this is Rever the reverse gear, which is actually part of the, the sleeve for the synchro. And then we already removed these two hickeys. And then underneath here, you see the snap ring right here? We gotta blow that snap ring out. We're gonna use the same method that we've been using for a while here. Got it. Bam, bam, bam. This hub is pressed on via a spline. And then, this guy is on roller bearing, so we could just support this here and then push down using a bearing separator, and then that thing should let loose. This is actually the hub between first and second gear, and so its orientation is important. These little nubbies, this thing has this stuff that's in here, so that faces upwards. And then on the back, it's flat, so it goes like this way. And then it looks like there is a synchro ring right here, synchro ring. And it sits this way because there's a cone right here that can't really go any other way. And then we can remove this all at one shot. This is first gear. And here is a tapered roller bearing. Sorry, not tapered roller bearing, a needle roller bearing. And that kind of fits together like that and this goes together like this. And it's important to note that the little brass protrusions right here, it has to sit in there, there it goes. See how it sits in there? Look, it sits in there, the little protrusion fits into the little hole right there. And of course, don't forget about this little spacer down here, right? So there's a little spacer down here that goes down at the bottom. Okay, one of the things I forgot to point out was <clears throat> underneath this thrust washer, there is a ball. See the spherical ball right there? Be careful with that thing so you don't lose it. Grab it with a magnet. So we'll put it in the bag with the other stuff. Got it. All right, here's my setup. I use the medium size bearing separator. Look at how much better it follows the diameter of whatever this little collar is. And then note that this guy, the ram, the diameter of it is bigger than that guy. So we want to push this thing through it. So I'm going to use this socket. I'm going to put it right in here. And this socket is smaller in diameter and it should fit in there. And then I'm going to use that to push that through. And of course, I'm going to put my hand down here and I'm going to hang on to it while it's pressing it through. Okay, so we just press this guy off. Pretty cool, it just fits onto here. And then the snap ring closes that thing up. So here's the snap ring. We'll put that thing into a bag and that is the output shaft. Pretty cool. All the surfaces look pretty clean on here. Project Yellow's transmission is completely apart and we ended up with two bare shafts. And as many of you know, this is where the hard work really begins. In the next episode, we're going to inspect all the synchro assemblies and determine which ones need to be replaced. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you on the track.